Hello, so today I'm going to be showing you guys how you can edit on iMovie. So basically I'm going to be giving you guys the blueprints on how to edit and you guys are going to be spicing it up and personalizing it as you continue editing and continue your little YouTube journey or whatever you are editing. It's the new year and you probably have different goals and maybe one of those goals is to start a YouTube channel, okay? Let me tell you right now, start it. Start it right now. Even if it's like just a trash video, at least you're starting it. You can delete it later on if it's really, really trash. I have been editing for like four, almost five years now, which is kind of crazy, but I first started like a YouTube channel. I would film and edit videos as if I had a YouTube channel freshman year of high school. That wasn't even when I was in it. It was before I even was in high school. I'm not only going to be talking about editing in this video. I'm also going to be telling you guys some other tips and tricks that I've learned over the past couple of years. And the first thing is storage. <laughs> So when you're filming a video, especially on your phone, because this video is all about doing stuff on your phone, you are going to be needing storage. I always try to have 15 gigabytes of storage free so that I don't have any problems when I have to film or when I have to go and edit and then I have to save the video and it says that I don't have enough storage space because then that's a little annoying. I totally recommend you get 15 gigabytes of storage space free on your phone. One way to do this is by Google photos google photos is so so nice because on your photos app that's built in your phone i currently have 12,882 total photos video screen recording screenshots all of the random stuff and my photos app is taking 197 gigabytes of a total of 250 gigabytes or something like that i think and google photos it has photos dating back from like 2016 that's almost 10 years ago almost 10 years ago, which is weird. Google Photos has 29,060 total videos, photos, screenshots, screen recordings, everything. It's only using 1.7 gigabytes of my total storage space of 250. Bro, bro, literally my in-phone photo app is literally taking 198 gigabytes more than Google Photos. I will say though, I do subscribe to this plan. I think it's terabyte of storage space, which they calculated and they said that it lasts up to like three years. So I still have like three years of storage space to fill up with my one terabyte a month, which is $10. There are other plans ranging from a dollar all the way to like probably $20, but you do get 15 gigabytes of free storage space when you first get Google Photos, which is so nice. And I love it so much. I love Google Photos. Get Google Photos right now. So I'm gonna be talking to you guys about the camera a little bit. So your phone has a front and back camera. Usually the front camera is really bad and the front camera is a lot better. So it depends on how you're filming your videos and it also depends on the lighting. If you are using your front camera and you have pretty good lighting coming at you, whether it's with a ring light, a lamp, or just like your indoor lighting situation or natural lighting if you're outside, then you're probably not gonna have too much trouble filming with your front camera because the quality is probably gonna be fine since there's enough light coming in and everything if you have good lighting i would definitely use the front camera the back camera always has a lot better of a quality so it really depends on how you like it so i would test out with the back camera and front camera both of them have their ups and downs front camera not as good as a quality as the back camera but you are able to see if you're recording what you are showing is in frame if you're in frame with the back camera you can't see if you're in frame you can't see if what you're showing is in frame but one way to fix that is by using the 0.5 setting on the back camera which i think most phones have it like the newer phones have it i think that's really nice but i think it does lower the quality of the normal back camera i think <laughs> Some accessories that you might want to buy in order to make filming a little bit easier is a tripod lighting or a mic i highly 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 recommend that you buy a tripod it is so convenient to have that way whenever you go out or even in your house you're able to always have somewhere to place your phone otherwise you're going to be struggling trying to put oh does this can this stay up there maybe i need a pillow like oh and this and this tissue like this okay that see it's a little bit tricky it's a little bit tricky but using a tripod it eliminates the struggle i mean there's probably still going to be a little bit more struggle on how like where you're able to place it not as much struggle in my opinion you can also get an extendable one that way like i have right now i have this extendable one it goes with these little notches it goes up and down and i broke it off but i'm gonna super glue it later on it also has a thing where you're able to turn it forward or sideways so the camera is facing down 
or this way which i think is really nice i've used it a couple of times and i love it lighting like i said earlier with your camera and everything lighting is so nice natural lighting ring lighting your natural lighting that you have in your home like the light bulbs and everything perfect you just gotta like figure out which way it works the best for you it also depends on what kind of videos you're doing maybe you're always doing nighttime videos and it also depends on when you're able to make the videos like right now daylight savings time it gets dark real quick and that's so annoying sometimes especially for me when i was in school i'd want to film a video but then but first i would have to eat do homework sometimes i had chores and i had to get those done first by the time that i wanted to film the video or i had time to film the video it was already dark and i was like bruh how am I supposed to film this video because my house doesn't have the greatest lighting so that was really annoying the second thing that I recommend that you get for sure is a lighting some sort of light personally I have this little lamp thing it's really nice it functions in a lot of different ways like look and then you can also do this it also has a clock and the date and like it says Saturday and it says the temperature and everything. It's weird. I have no idea. And it's also a charger. The only reason why I have this is because I got this at prom. It was like a, every senior got like a little gift basket or something that they won. And I got like a dorm accessory basket. So it had towels, slippers, and a, like this light in it. It has different modes. It has, but this is the warm mode. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it has five different settings because now it's back on the warm mode. It has different intensities as well. So this is the highest intensity. It has different lightings like this one all the way down. This is the dimmest that it goes. So I really recommend that you get some sort of ring light. They're very convenient to have. And then the last thing that I would get is a mic. I personally never used a mic when I was filming on my phone because now I have like an actual camera. I have a Canon. When I was using my phone, I never get a mic, but you definitely should get a mic if you are always filming where it's busy, if it's crowded, or if you're filming videos and you're quite far away from the camera. Let's say you're at the park and you put this on the bench and then you go shoot some basketball and you can't, you're saying stuff and the camera can't hear because it's like 10 feet away then you're probably gonna want some sort of mic because it would greatly benefit you and your content and make your videos look a lot better and you can also just get a mic just in case you want the sound quality to sound a little bit nicer okay so we're gonna be doing all of our editing on iMovie this is personally what I use but I'm also gonna be showing you guys some different apps that you can also use to add to your videos so first you're gonna go into iMovie and then right here right here you're gonna just drag it up and push on movie it's the highlighted one right here it's the bottom one click on movie and a lot of the times it's gonna take you to this moments bar I would exit out of here click on the media and then go into videos sometimes you might have your videos put into an album which is a really good idea especially if you're making a video throughout the month throughout the week within like three days or something like that so in that case you're just gonna click on the album and then you're gonna go all the way down because all the way down is where your first video is going to be and i would just highlight all the video clips that you are going to be using i'm not going to be using this whole video this was a video that i was going to make and then i didn't and then here at the bottom it's going to say create movie and it's also going to show you how many clips you have and how long all of your footage is usually my footage is like about an hour if it's like just a 15 to 20 minute video yours might be longer your might be shorter it I mean, it depends on how much good content there actually is in each clip. You're going to swipe all the way to the front. From here, you're going to start editing. So the first thing that I'm going to be teaching you guys is how to trim a video. So you can either drag this back and forth. This only works if you're either at the beginning of the clip or at the very end end of the clip if you try to do this in the middle of the clip it ain't gonna work in order to trim a video in the middle this is how you're going to do it so you're gonna highlight your clip you're gonna push the split button right here just click it and then right where you want to start it up again that is where you're going to split again highlight the video that you do not want and then click on delete and there you have it and then like i said you can trim it like this or you could trim it like that just in the beginning or the end of the video clip i'm just gonna go through all of these little settings at the bottom with you guys in no particular order so first up is going to be detach this you use in case you want to do a voiceover of a video clip you are saying something and you want to put it in a specific scene so let's say okay so here i'm saying something i'm gonna split it get ready it actually oh, reminds me of my and then I'm gonna stop it because I want it to stop the audio right here, split. And then I'm going to highlight this and click detach and see what it did. It detached the audio 
and right here if you can see on the clip it also has the the volume button but like off that means that there is no sound and then you can drag this wherever you want so let's say i want it right here it ready. It actually oh, okay. And then let's say you don't want the audio from the clip that you can see, so you're going to display it, and then you're going to highlight, and then you're going to go to this volume button, and then if you want it all the way off, then you're going to just drag it all the way off. It ready. It actually oh, matches. Okay. It ready. It actually oh, matches. Okay. But that's what that sounds like. And that's how you do that and then if you want to like copy and paste a video clip all you do let's say you want to copy and paste this so you, all you would have to do is push duplicate and there you go there's your little scene right here these little things they are transitions between the two clips there are different ones so there's dissolve slide wipe and fade there's also a theme one but i'm not sure what exactly that does so i wouldn't really mess with this and i personally don't use these but i do think the slide and the wipe one would be really good to use if you are transitioning from one scene to another scene like let's say you're at your house and then the next second you're at the bakery um so this could be a good way to transition over from your house to the bakery like this <laughs> I like that. I think that's cool. You can also make this go slower or you can make it go uh, faster. Like here on the fade, you can make it go a lot slower of a fade or you can make it do a really fast fade. And then you can also, I just figured this out while I was messing with this, but you can also click the way that you want it to wipe or swipe. So that one is from the bottom. This one is from the top. Um, and then this one is from from the left and then this one is from the right so there's a def lot of different options like I said these this is like the blueprint of me editing and then in case you want to delete a scene let's say you actually misclicked and you don't want to duplicate the scene so in that case you're just gonna highlight the clip that you do not want and you're going to push the delete button easy peasy lemon squeezy sometimes you want to do a time lapse and one easy way to do this is to just click on this speed button right here and then you're just gonna go over to the bunny and that's gonna be two times speed. Or if you want it like really slow-mo, you can also do that. Ta-da! Like I said earlier, you can either make this go quiet or really loud or in case your audio in your footage is not as loud as you want it to be, you can also take it up a little bit or if it's too loud, you can take it down a little bit. Play around with this when you edit for sure. Speaking of volume, you might want to have music or sound effects go into your video. In that case, you can go over to this little plus sign and then down here you can see the button where it says audio. iMovie has music and sound effects that you can use. I really like the sound effects that they have. Like let's say uh, you just woke up. Or let's say I finally cleaned my bedroom. Or let's say there's a really loud dark barking outside right now. There's a whole bunch of different little sound effects that you can use on here and I would definitely recommend you use the sound effects on here. They're really easy to use, but the music, I don't really love the music. So you'd go to soundtracks and then there's music that you can download um, based on different moods. Like this one's chill, this one is playful, this one is pop. So there's a bunch of different music, but I don't really like the songs that they provide. So these are two websites that I use. One is called Hello Thematic. So you can join for free. It's very easy to do. When you sign up, it'll ask you for like the vibes that you're going for and then it'll have like playlists of like the newest songs that are this vibe and this is what i use a lot of the time and then here you're able to listen to the songs that you want and then you're able to download them or if you don't want to use this then you can also use epidemic sound so a lot of people use this and i really like this because you're able to also search for like the vibe that you're looking for but you're actually able to search for it one of the problems that i've had with using thematics is that you aren't able to precisely like do everything that you are wanting to look for it is so much easier to find a certain song find a certain vibe and listen to similar songs using epidemic sound and i really like it i think you can download a limited amount of music from epidemic sound and then you're actually gonna have to buy a subscription i think and that's the same way with thematic with thematic you're able to like do a little surveys in order to actually put these songs into your videos you are going to be downloading them and then you're going to go into files and then here you can look up the name of the song and let's just do this one 
it's gonna go in as a background song which is kind of annoying if you are wanting to put this song in like the middle of your video it's probably gonna go to the very front of your video so you're going to highlight it and if you want to move it you're gonna push foreground you're gonna put it in the foreground so it's easier for you to move around all you'll have to do is move it to where you want it and then you can just have it play you can also do a couple of things with this what i do a lot of the time is make it fade in so it's just not abruptly all of a sudden a song and then um i also do this to the end so it's not just abruptly ending to the song you know what i mean especially if you're not using the entire song and you're just using like i don't know like 10 seconds of it i don't know like a minute of it then it's probably better if you fade it in and out of video clips speaking of voiceovers earlier you are able to do a voiceover in the app and you're also able to record a clip with voiceover you can just click this voiceover button and then right here you're able to see how loud you are and then you're going to be able to push record hey 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 today we are going to be doing this voice then you can either in order to listen back to it you push review in order to retake it you can push retake in order to cancel you can push cancel and in order to actually use the voiceover you can just push accept and then it'll be there hey 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 today we are going to be doing this voice in case you forgot to say something in your video you can click on the camera button and you'll be like hey i forgot to tell you guys that we actually had cupcakes right before this and i didn't want to spoil my appetite so i didn't eat the apples or you can also take a photo in case you are needing to take a photo those are very convenient little tools that you can use. I really like them. And then sometimes maybe you want to show a video or a photo that you did earlier. In order to do this, you'll just go to photos. Maybe you have an album for this, but I don't. So we're just going to do this random little photo right here. Um, you can either add it as a clip like this by using the plus button right there. Or if you want it as an overlay, you'll click on the photo that you want. Push the three dots and then click on either picture and picture split screen or green and blue screen or cutaway. The one that I'm talking about is picture and picture. Like what I'm using right now in the video. You can drag it around and you can take away the white border that it had. And you can also, also zoom in. And then you can also move it around. So let's say I want it right there. I want to do a split screen. Basically what this does, it just has the photo and the video of you. You can also do this with video, by the way. I'm just using the photo as an example. Green and blue screen, we're actually going to be using in a second. But basically, if you want to make this transparent, you'll just highlight the clip and click on a button and bam, it's transparent. But that's kind of boring. So, you know what we're actually going to do with that? We're going to go to pick collage and add some text to the video. Now, this is kind of difficult in my opinion. Push the plus sign to create a new little project. Go into wallpaper. We're going to change the background color over to green. And then we're going to go into doodle and we're going to estimate about how big the screen is for a video and i think it's about that and then over here is how i like to add text it's very tedious and very boring and very annoying because if you're trying to put the text specifically in a specific spot it makes it really hard you can turn this this way like that and let's say i want it in this corner over here in the video i usually screenshot it or you can actually save it to your phone by pushing done and going pushing the save button we're gonna go into our photos app and we're going to click the edit button we're just gonna flip over the photo like this so that it's upright and we are able to read it clearly then we're gonna go over into iMovie again click the plus sign go into our photos recently added we're going to add the the photo of hello three dots green and blue screen so then you're gonna able to tap that and ta-da you have some text and the reason why I did that is because I really dislike the text that we have in iMovie I don't really like it it has gotten a lot better over the years you're able to make it smaller you're able to, to move it around which I really like I don't like the animations that it does and I'm not really sure how to get rid of that so I just don't even bother with that part in pic collage you're able to use a whole bunch of different text styles so here is a bunch of like the text styles the ones with a crown next to it, those you have to pay the subscription, like a month or whatever. But there's a bunch of free ones that I really like. And then there's a bunch of different colors that you can use. And then last but not least, we have some filters that you can play around with. Um, you can't really color grade your videos in here, but I'm sure that there is some app where you can color grade your videos. Like this kind of looks, this kind of looks cool actually. You can see how the color, I think it just made it more vibrant, more saturated maybe. 
I showed you guys how to navigate around iMovie. Now I'm actually going to tell you how I edit usually on iMovie. I do a couple of rounds of editing. So the first round of editing is just doing the basic steps. So this is where I usually split up videos. Uh, take away any blank spaces that I don't need because a lot of the times I stumble over my words and I just did it like that whole gap I was thinking of the words to say so I would delete the whole gap of me saying nothing and then the second round is me adding in the sound effects actually putting in all the video effects as well the zoom ins all the pans ever and everything like that I add in the pictures that I want to put in if there are like overlays and stuff like that sound effects third round I would probably watch the video over just to make sure that everything looks good then in the fourth stage I rewatch the whole entire video from a viewer's perspective again and I just make sure that the whole video looks good make sure that I didn't forget to like edit something out or something like that okay so you just finished editing your video and you're done you did all the rounds you made sure that everything is tip-top perfect so you go over to done and then you're gonna push this square with an arrow and then here you're going to push save video or you could also export the project but I usually push save video from here you're gonna go into options and you're always gonna make sure that it's at the highest quality possible usually I don't do 4k because that takes up more storage space for me so usually I stick to 10 and 80p and then you're gonna push save video and then when you're done with that you can either go into YouTube or YouTube studio on your phone I would recommend you go into YouTube because it's just it just seems a lot easier right now um, you're gonna go into the circle with a plus button and you're going to click the video that you're going to be uploading This is not the video that I'm going to be uploading, but let's pretend it is then you're going to push next and from here You're able to add the thumbnail you're able to add your title your description and once it's done uploading Do you want it to be public unless it's private or do you want to schedule it right now? You can also add it to playlists in case you are wanting to add some video cards or uh, end screens Those are usually desktop things that I cannot do on YouTube studio on my phone on the app so in that case you're gonna go into safari put in youtube desktop you're gonna hold on to it and push open a new tab then go over into the left top click on those little lines go into your videos then over here you can click on the little pencil tool and it'll take you over to this page where you're able to click on end screen and cars and here that you are able to do all of that just in case you don't have a computer you don't have a laptop okay so that is everything that you need to know on how to edit your youtube video on imovie and some extra things as well because i'm nice like that no i'm kidding anyways thank you so much for watching and hopefully that helped and hopefully you're able to embark on this fun new cool youtube journey that you're about to do hopefully do it it'll be fun i promise hopefully i get to see you guys somewhere else on my channel but anyways thank you so much for watching wow. oh my god thank you so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one bye